Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. It is all about racing. In this episode we are going to take a look at the second of two Ford GT IXO models that I just received. This one being the number 68 car in red, white, and blue. And the other you may have previously seen in my other video entitled You Could Put Lipstick on a Pig and It's Still a Pig and that is the 67 red and white throwback version that you see there. Uh, these are both the same castings in 143 scale, the same collection, just different models. Uh, and, you know, one thing I will say about IXO is they do make a lot of very nice, very cool Ford GTs in 143 scale. However, I, it, as I mentioned before, I was very hesitant to buy these. In fact, I looked at these for about a year before I pulled the trigger on them, and I only bought these two because I got them so inexpensively. Uh, but even that being said, I kind of feel like I wasted my money. Oh, the reason being this, these models are just, they're, they're just out of scale. And I am going to do a direct comparison of a, of a um, model from TSM compared to one of these. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by because the TSM model, I think, hits it right on. But nevertheless, if you have to have a Ford GT and you cannot afford a Spark or a TSM model, which can run as much as $85, $90, and you can get these, quite frankly, for $50, bucks, I purchased both of these for $35 each, including shipping. Quite a good deal, and that's why I pulled the trigger on them. But they're just not good models. As, as I had mentioned, that their casting is was was poorly done. The, the proportions on it are just wrong. And what's a real shame is, for those of you that collect 143, IXO also makes these same cars in 118 scale, and the 118 scale cars are almost perfect. They got the proportions of those cars right. They just didn't in 143 scale, and if they can get it right in 118, I don't know why they can't redo it in 143. But anyhow, that being said, this is one of the famous red, white, and blue models from 2019 uh, when they came out with the brighter red and almost looks orange in this video, or it shouldn't be. Uh, and being an IXO, it is a die cast model mounted on a plastic base. Uh, it does come with a nice acrylic jewel cover and a box uh, which says a limited edition series. Now, you've heard me say this before, and if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, we'll talk about this again. There's nothing on this model anywhere on the box, on the model itself, that says that this is a limited edition model or has any documentation to prove that it is other than what it says on the box. And to me, what that means is they probably made as many as 10,000 of these models or more. In fact, if you've ever bought a Tarmax or 164 scale car, it comes with a little card that has four digits. And I saw one guy do a video on YouTube where he had number 6,096 of those four digits, which means they made about 10,000 of those cars. Uh, you got four digits, that's 999. You know, do the math, it, it, it figures. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing that they probably made as many as 10,000 of these, but they don't even tell you what number you got of it. So I don't really buy that. You know, I don't really care because I do have quite a few IXO models of this, what they call this limited edition collection, and it doesn't make any difference to me. Uh, that they're limited edition or not. But anyhow, that being said, you know, this model is for the most part very, very nicely done. We spin it around here. We'll take a look at the front of it a little bit. You know, unlike the Spark model, it's not fluid with uh, uh, carbon fiber finishing like you typically see on the dive planes in the front splitter or even on the TSM model, which I'll show you, which is very, very nicely done. IXO just doesn't give you that, but then again, they don't charge you 85, 90 bucks for a model. You pick this up for 50 bucks on average. Headlight detail is not exceptional, but they get it. You know, they they give you a headlight, you know, that looks good, but just not exceptional. Uh, they include things like the little area and the little metal thing that you see a rot there. Uh, that measures airspeed and wind velocity, and they feed back, back, back to the engineers. Uh, you do have the front radiator, and you can take a look and kind of see, you know, the paintwork is a little sloppy there because you can, you can see that all around the black on the white. And unfortunately, this is something that you get typically with IXO models. Again, it's not real noticeable unless you look up really close. You do get nice interior detail. Windshield banner looks good. You know, one thing that they did get right on this, thank God, is they got the red mirrors on this car, uh, which it should have, but it should also have a red banner uh, or a little, little banner of red on top of the Ford, which they missed on this model.
Now you get a nice shot of the passenger side, so to speak. And all in all, looks good. Wheel detail is okay, not great. I love when you pull it up and just take a look at the flying buttresses, which is just one of the cool aspects of this car. And you have enough radials there to almost qualify this thing as a porcupine. And they are consistent with all their cars and the radials looking like that. None of the other, like the, the TSM models are different, but I guess, you know, every manufacturer has their own rendering that they, they, they think is correct. It really doesn't matter as long as they get most of the other details right. And there is a good look at the side of the car. And this is my, probably my favorite view of the car, that being the back. I just love the back of the Ford GT. And they get this right with this car. The taillights are nicely done. They're beautiful. Uh, you've got the black nacelles in between the support struts for the rear wing. And the rear wing on this side of the gun is massive. It says Ford EcoBoost on it. You've got that massive rear diffuser and you have a tow hook. Now, the diffuser doesn't have the carbon fiber finish like you get on a Spark or a TSM model, but nevertheless, it looks good. The decals are nicely done. In fact, I can't find any decal mistakes on this, which again is somewhat unusual for an IXO as they usually screw up one or two decals somewhere on the car. That's a look in the engine bay. This is a mid-engine car, which means it's right behind the driver compartment. There usually is nothing to see, but there is a six-cylinder EcoBoost engine in there that gives this car about 550 brake horsepower. The the, uh, the production car that you could buy if you had a million bucks uh, actually has is more powerful than the race car is, but, but bear in mind, these cars have balance of performance, which makes them kind of equalize all of them so they're compatible with other cars in its class, so it's detuned, so to speak, for racing. Again, take another look at the flying buttresses here and the, the clear air in between there. I just absolutely love the shape of this car. So cool. As I said, such a nice model and so affordable. It's just a shame that they really didn't get this one right. Or this scale, should I say. The 118 models look fine from all I could see, but <clears throat> this car, yeah, is just all wrong. But anyhow, I won't waste any more of your time on this. I appreciate your watching. Uh, the one thing that I would say, and I guess if, if, there's, if there's one thing that you do take home from this, if you can't afford the other cars and you want to get these, they're fine. They're good-looking cars. As I say, the proportions are wrong, uh, and as long as you don't have them side by side with another car made by another manufacturer. They're not going to look that bad, <clears throat> but and by itself, they just don't look that good. What is worse now is that CMR is selling two car sets for almost a hundred bucks where you get one of these modern Ford GTs along with the matching Ford GT from 1966. And I would just refrain you from buying that as CMR is an IXO company and that Ford GT that you get of the modern era is going to be one like these, uh, and you're just going to have an awful looking set. Take care. Thanks.